Fam Fam guys, we have an update with the RTX NVIDIA 50 series. If you don't know who I am, I'm Chris Mizo. I love to talk about PCs and tech. If you are interested in that kind of stuff, make sure you stay tuned in the channel because I will share so much more information and I am going to try my best to get the RTX 5070 and the RTX 5090. I'll be running it actually against a RTX 4090 to see how well it will compare against it. So first and foremost, let's go straight into the benchmarks because this is going to be the more interesting part, especially for those who are looking for professional use, such as using it for Premiere Pro or DaVinci or any of those type of applications. They did run a Blender test with the NVIDIA RTX 5090. I gotta say, it's pretty interesting. As we all know, the RTX 5090 does have a lot more wattage compared to the RTX 4090. I'm gonna go over the specifications really quick. GB202 GPU built into it, 21,760 shaders. It does have a clock rate speed of two megahertz and boost rate of 2.4 megahertz up to 104.9 teraflops. It has up to 32 gigabytes of G7. It also has 512 memory bit bus, PCI Express 5 on its lane for the interface. As I mentioned, the TDP is at 575 watts. Now, if you compare it to the RTX 4090, where it has the AD102 GPU, 16,384 active shaders, base clock of 2.2 megahertz over 2.5 megahertz. It also is a 384 memory bit bus. On top of it, it has 82.6 teraflops. PCI Express 4, going through the power, it is 450 watts of power on the GPU. Now, this is off of Blender 3.6, and here are the results as the RTX 4090 pulls about 13,000. Now, this is off of my system, and they also compared even a RTX 4090 mobile GPU to see how well it compares. Now, compared to the RTX 5090, and it is also on Blender 3.6, so it was a fair test given as it gave a median score of 17,822.17. Do have to say that you do have quite a bit of power over the RTX 4090 in Blender's test. It has about 37% more power compared to the RTX 4090 off of Blender. So for those who use it for uh, professional use or want to use the graphics card for professional use, it is a good sign, but it is also a significant price increase. And that is what I will enter just very shortly from now. The Blender numbers show that because of the shader cores, it does have 33% more shaders. On the RTX 5090, you're also requiring a bit more power for the RTX 5090 in order to achieve this score. So some of you out there might feel like that's not really that great because of the power consumption and you guys might be correct. It might not be that much more of an improvement. Then again, we will see once the graphics card is released. Now let's go over the pricing real quick because the pricing is a bit interesting as we do have a different pricing between Canada, uh, Canada's websites. We also have different pricing in European websites. Now, this does include the VAT tax. I feel really bad for all the Europeans out there. I really feel, feel for you because that, that just blows. And pretty soon, the US, we're going to pretty much go through that same thing eventually once we go into the tariffs. But again, that's a whole nother subject. Let me get straight to the pricing so you get an idea of what it looks like. Now, I want to go over the European prices first because those are the ones that are also a big part of the market. The PNY GeForce RTX 5090, it's a beautiful looking card, 2,649 euros for it. 2,599 euros for the other overclock version of PNYs. They are also for Zotax, it's 2,889 euros. Hopefully these are just placeholder prices, that these are just not leaks of actual prices because that, that is insane. And again, this is including the VAT tax that they do have in Europe. They also have the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 5090 overclock for 2,789 euros. And also for the Gigabyte Aorus 
which is one of my personal favorites. Gigabyte has excellent GPUs when it comes to this. It's 2,759 euros for the lowest model. It's 2,599 euros. And dang, that is uh, some pretty pricey GPUs out there, pretty hefty. Now, if you're wondering more about the RTX 5080, I do have some of those numbers out there that are in the, for those Europeans who are interested in it. The PNY RTX 5080, this is the overclock version, one of their higher tier ones. It is 1,529 euros for this card. For the just regular overclock version, it is 1,499 euros. Also for the ASUS Prime version, which is not the high version of ASUS's uh, GPUs, the higher version is the ROG line when it comes to their GPUs. It's 1,836 euros. With the, the Gigabyte Ors overclock version, it's 1,922 euros. For the ASUS Tough Gaming uh, GeForce, uh, this now it goes up a little bit more at 1,907 euros. That's pretty insane. That's almost the price of a Founders Edition RTX 5090 in uh, US dollars. But anyway, and of course, it's uh, still a little bit uh, cheaper in US dollars. Going over to Asus ROG Astral, their newer line, which has the four fans on it, it goes up to 2,022 euros for this card. And you can take a look at all the other pricing for the cards to get an, a glimpse, an idea of what it looks like in uh, European models. Now for the Canadian models in Canadian dollars, I hear goes someone's for you. Now this, of course, in Canada, it is a little bit different as well. So you got to let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the pricing so far. And again, hopefully some of these are just placeholder prices and ho hopefully they give more of a discount once it releases vastly. But then again, we don't know how it's going to be because let me go into when these cards are supposed to release. Now, first and foremost, these cards will be released of January 30th of 2025. So if you are looking to purchase a new GPU, make sure you keep that day open. In fact, the more interesting thing, especially for those who want the Founder Edition for the NVIDIA uh, Founders Edition of a D50 series, you're, there is no pre-orders. Yes, there, there are no pre-orders for the cards currently. So you have to be ready and prepared on January 30th of 2025 in order to purchase a graphics card of your choice, unfortunately. So make sure you get a chance to go onto NVIDIA's website. You can sign up to get the notification of when they release the card, but most of the time you get the notification late and it's better just to go to the website itself, especially if you're looking to purchase the card itself. So fam, man, guys, what are your thoughts about the RTX 50 series so far and all the incoming news about it currently? Hopefully you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is into PC and tech, make sure you share this video with them. Also make sure you follow my new Discord channel right here as it is brand new. I know it isn't crazy crowded and it isn't a talk to a bunch just yet, but it is new and I love to hear from you guys. On top of it, if you're not part of the big wonderful fan man, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my X handle right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fan man, guys, I will also be talking about the AMD 9070 soon. And hopefully you guys are nice and informed about all the updates. And let me know what you would like to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.